commit. When you fucking commit, you will get something out of it, this life. And that does not mean that you will get what you want, but you will be rewarded. You will commit, go balls deep, and you will fucking be rewarded. Welcome to Let's Play by the Gamers, a podcast hosted by actress Kylie Vernoff. Fans know Kylie best as the fiery Susan Grimshaw in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Miranda Cowan in GTA 5. Our series features some of the most informed and exciting people in the gaming industry today. Kylie and our guests discuss careers, gaming, and so much more. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out the gamers.com website to hear exclusive bonus material from each of our guests. Hey everybody! Okay, this is it. Welcome to part two of our special bonus season finale. In this episode, I continue my conversation with my old friend and star of GTA V, Walking Dead, Westworld, and so much more, the one and only Stephen Ogg. And if you already listened to part one, you know there's plenty of adult language going on between us old pals, so consider yourself warned. Okay, here's part two. I am going to ask you a little bit, just we don't even have to talk about it too much, but I want to talk to you about how a little bit about um, voice acting, which is just that it's the fact that you and I both ended up on these video games is so sort of um, surprising to me, although um, although there are a lot of members of my cast who don't like being called a voice actor for what we did on um on Red Dead Redemption and for what you guys did in uh, GTA. Yes, because yes. It's and I'll say right now, I don't like that either. I'll join yeah. you. Same. But I will say this. Did what? you do motion capture on yours? Yeah, full performance capture. For, okay, so okay. then why are you a voice actor? What does that fucking mean? So, right. So this is, this is what I was just going to say about this. Okay. I am just going to say that one of the things that got me out of having to borrow fucking money from James Mayer was when we started getting a bunch of voiceovers. And I really- Remember that? 10 auditions a day, running yeah. all over New York City together. That's ah. where we'd run into each other more than acting class. It was like, ah, hey. And we were such a community. We were such a community. And so- For five was, years. For five ten, years. 10 auditions a day, maybe. Like that was fucking 50 times a week. Yeah. It was incredible time. It was incredible. And because of those years, even when I had lean years, you know, I had health insurance and I had pension accruing and all that stuff. And so I think that the, that voice actor for me, it certainly doesn't relate to what I did on Red Dead or for what you did on Grand Theft Auto. But I, I think I don't mind being called a voice actor because I'm so grateful for, um, for the support that it, it gave us in those lean years. Um, and even then, Steve, even then, you, I remember when you had this spot that was running for, I think it was Nexium, and I remember you just saying, the purple pill. And, yeah, the little purple pill that helps you poop. <laughs> I remember thinking, this guy is not trying to sound like anybody else. He's not trying to be like anybody else. He is making, he is finding his own take on everything. And that is what is elevating him. And so I just want you to know that I have been inspired by you for, you know, for, for decades. Um, oh, bless you. I'm just, I'll just cry over that. I could <laughs> literally cry right now. That's the kind of fucking hot mess I am. Um, thank you. It's very sweet. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, you know, I had just luck with that. I mean, luck is also created. Um, I, I put in six years in Europe. I always knew I was going to get back to acting. I believe, and I've tried to um, impart this upon certain people in my life that truly don't listen to me um, or choose not to at this period in their life listen to me. But man, and, that, and, and, I, and I should say there are other people that do listen to me ideally or hopefully about this listen you put in the work into life and i'm not talking about i'm gonna be a big actor or i'm gonna be a recording artist or i'm gonna be a dancer i'm just talking about if 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 you put into life the work 
which is to me commitment balls deep and i i don't i don't think that expression could possibly be any more pc this day and age but i don't care deep in it too i want to be ball so let's be balls deep in this together it's just a, a, a commitment to whatever you fucking do and that means living your life fucking honestly truthfully and i Again, I've prefaced all this with living with pain myself, living with depression, anxiety, sadness, all of this shit. Commit. When you fucking commit, you will get something out of it, this life. And that does not mean that you will get what you want necessarily, but you will be rewarded. You will. And that that means you could, you know, you'll, you'll... get something that you don't expect and that's not what you're going for but it doesn't matter commit go balls deep and you will fucking be rewarded be it through a a love or a a friendship or seeing the most glorious sunset of your life you just need a moment it doesn't even have to be a lifelong thing commit commit to life like really fucking go for it go for whatever and guarantee fucking t you will get something it's an energy It's why people pray. It's why people meditate. It's manifestation. It's all of these things. Do whatever you fucking do. Choose the juice to drink. But you will fucking get something out of it. And I believe like voiceovers when I did that was because I committed to a lifestyle in Europe and living and writing and sleeping on the streets in my leather pants and you know, man, shave, having French braids and then shaving my head, and fire engine red hair and being who I wanted to be. I was rewarded. I never studied voiceovers. Everyone thought, are you Midwestern? What is that? What is your accent? I never told people I was from Canada. I just fucking, you know, Will Arnett and I are doing GMC trucks. I did every fucking product. I did GMC, Nexium, KFC. I did all these things. And wow, how lucky was I? Yeah. Me too, man. So lucky. We it doesn't so exist lucky. anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's, it's harder. You know, I, you know, I think it's definitely, we were there in the golden time and I, you know, and I, and I have so much gratitude for it. And I, you know, and I think, and I think one of those big lessons that, you know, that you're, that you're talking about there is that, so many people in our business, I think, especially when you're young, will come out and say, uh, find out what actress you're most like, or dress like this person, or cut your hair like this, or... Who, I, who, who do you resemble? Like a band resemb- being told, uh, what is your sound like? Yes, right. Oh, Kylie, you're like a young Anne Margaret. So let's package you that way or, you know, <laughs> whatever. But I think that I did have this thing in my, in, in my spirit that said, that said the things that might make me hard to cast right now are the things that will eventually set me apart. That so when something is meant to be mine, it will be mine. Yeah, that's, you know, feeds into the point of me being chased literally around Eugene cost elementary fucking playground by the Catholic guys across the street, wanting to beat me up. Luckily I was a quick little fucker <laughs> again, best buns. I got that. Cause I had apparently the best looking ass on the team. Yeah. My lips and my nose have become something that people are like, you know, I love your full lips or your nose. It's like, wow, isn't that fucking ironic? Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I know it's it's hard to embrace it, I think. I think when you're starting out and all these powerful people are saying, change this, consider changing this. But um, yeah, the things that separate you and the things, you know, that might make you a little different are eventually the things that make you who you are and what yeah. is special. And it's crazy. It makes no it's sense. Like the, the, like the business, you know, I've quit before every day. I keep saying lately, I'm going to quit again. I just like a fuck. I just, the, the business model is horrible that everything it's like, ah, oh. and what you see nowadays, it's like, ah, oh, the same fucking actor and everything. And, oh, Jesus, it's fucking <laughs> horrible. 
And then also you look back, like, to, you know, talk about to, to reciprocate uh, the love, which is not necessarily needed nor, nor demanded or, or asked. But I remember watching the, the Woody Allen film. I, uh, I've done six, Steve. Do you mean um, Sweet and sweet and Lowdown? It was the Sweet and Lowdown. Yeah. I remember seeing that. And actually, you know what's ironic? It was, was Samantha Morton in that one? Yeah. Yeah. We Isn't were, that fucking... That's hilarious. Uh, I was just oh, talking about her yesterday. It was an amazing experience. I, working with Sam, I'm working with Sean Penn. It was really, you know... Yeah, but I, I'm like, again, it's like, you know, oh, there she is. Why... How does she not then get the next thing, the next thing, the next thing and go bigger and bigger? You know why? Because it has nothing to do with goodness. It has nothing to do with talent. It has everything to do with the business. And that's the fucking way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I do wish sometimes that we had more control over the path that we're on. But, I, you know, at the same time, I think good work matters. Uh, and, you know, I've gotten to, I mean, I've worked with some directors that I, I'm just, you know, blown away that I've gotten to work with. So, you know, I think that our good work does shine through and maybe it doesn't make us movie stars or household names, but I think that it matters to the people who watch and, um, you know, I, I just love that we're still in it. And I'll tell you something, I have absolutely no interest in ever retiring but I would like at some point when I'm like in my dotage to uh, like open up a theater somewhere and just get to play all the kings, queens, all the roles that I, you know, have wanted to play. And I hope that you will come do that with me. Just get on a stage. And I would. I, I was talking about theater the other day because I'm like, I'm so... You know, I've been talking for years. I was actually in London meeting with like Trafalgar Studios and I, the old Vic, the new Vic, all meetings regarding doing a play. And there mm -hmm. were some that were upcoming and um, some that I wanted to bring. You know, I've been wanting to do a reboot of Lonesome West because mm -hmm. it really hasn't been done again. Um, and the theater, it's been so long, it scares the fuck out of me. It's been, you know, probably 20 years since I've done a play. And I really don't have an interest of just doing a play in a black box theater. Because, again, I believe go big or go home. Right. Um, I'm thinking more like St. Anne's Warehouse, Park Armory. The places in New York, for me, that always resonate and always give me something that leaves me actually inspired to continue <laughs> yeah um sure. or even the red cat in los angeles there's there's places that do these things and i'm 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 anxious to do theater again because it is the actor's medium it is where you you suck or you don't and i know i don't suck but i certainly am scared that i do and you know uh, I, I fear that I can't even remember the, the whole play anymore or whatever it is that I'm scared of. Um, I yeah, would totally one thing jump at the chance to do that. And yeah. I would totally um, want to do that. And that's, that's sort of where I'm at now of like, even like, I just, you know, I'm talking about maybe we're, we're going to, and Melina just did it again, but like, I want to do red. Um, so uh, I just, I, I feel a lot of times, and especially in this business, which is, I think, good for anyone to know at whatever level you're at, you just feel unsatisfied and untapped because I truly feel like, and this, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed. I've been very, very fortunate with things I've done, but my fucking God am I just not satisfied with where I'm at? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like my hand is outstretched saying, I want this over there so badly because I don't even feel I have not done anything. Honestly, I've really wanted or dreamed of doing because yeah. all of these big things have been great. I had no control over that. But as far as like, you know, my, my go-to with like, well, if you could do anything tomorrow, what would you do? Okay, well, I've always said the life and death of Marina Abramovich. That was at the Park Armory with Willem Dafoe. Yeah, I in, didn't 
Yeah, I didn't see it, but I remember reading a lot of press. About oh, it. Yeah. I always say that's my go to. Um, I, I don't have a bucket list, but as far as one item, I would say. And, and Kim Cotes, who's I love to death and I think he's a brilliant actor. And he did the Canadian premiere, the only production of Jerusalem in Toronto, which I never got to see. But Johnny Rooster fucking Byron is I must do before I die. And if that will be in a black box theater or in a backyard production with a fucking tent, I will do it. Because I think as far as characters go, as far as, you know, be it Yago, I love, as far as sort of a, a 21st century character study, I think Jez Butterworth's Jerusalem and Johnny Rooster fucking Byron is pretty much it. And I think I could... That is in my wheelhouse. That is my thing. And I would love to fucking do that. I and think it, that you, you know? putting it out there, I think I, I have no doubt that you will make that happen. And I will be there. I would love to. But again, but, I don't like all of these things, even at Red Cat Theater. And, you know, I'm still like... I. I I've had the really good fortune, especially within the past year of meeting a lot of artists that I've been like, for me, inspiration, you know, like, you know, would you want to meet De Niro or, or I just watched the Irishman the other day. Maybe this is why it's coming up, but you know, De Niro or Pacino, Scorsese, Hey, Hey, bless them all, man. It's just, that's never been my thing since I was a kid. <laughs> I've never been like, Ah, Robert De Niro, Pacino, <laughs> Scorsese, Goodfellow, you know, Godfather. I've never watched The Godfather. Horrible, I know. And I promise but, you, those guys are not satisfied either. <laughs> I promise you. No, and they're not. But the point being is, like, as far as meeting them, like, that was never my thing. But, like, meeting, you know, like, you know, Matt from The National I met this year. And The National has probably had more influence on my life than any actor. Uh, Dallas Green, City in Color. The largest inspiration in my life in the past five years. I would say he has had more, aside from maybe some painters, um, Dallas Green, for his lyrics and his music, has had more of an impact upon me to A, inspire others, to carry on, to do what I need to do, has been him. And in Vancouver, you know, where shooting where I'm shooting Snowpiercer, to meet him, to hang out backstage. Just us. Uh. For 30 minutes. And even like go see a musician. Like like we hung out and after the show. And this is not like a Vancouver, you know, party thing. This is us. <laughs> this is us. Yeah. Um, and talking about Gord Downey and talking about Alice in Chains, who inspired me. I mean, I, I was with Jerry Cantrell and Lane Staley in Paris when, you know, fucking Lane Staley's trying to get off heroin and smoking marijuana like it was cigarettes. And we're backstage and we all got to write lyrics and they performed a sort of a song that we had all written with lyrics. Like I've had pretty crazy experiences in my life for what I am, for what I have come from, for what I do. Um, and then to be with Dallas Green was like, and, and I told him at one point, he said, let's go listen to this artist that I found in London that is, was opening for him. And because prior to that, you're just sort of like, oh, you know, you're talking about people you both know and I love your, uh, like your work. And I'm standing next to him on the side of the stage in Vancouver. And I, and I just, I immediately, I said, you know, before this gets weird, before the night passes, before you go on stage, before I leave, you, you have been like my love. You've been my light. You've been my inspiration. You have got me through tough times. You've inspired me. It's through that music city and color with which the entire, the majority of the character of Trevor on Grand Theft Auto was 
came to life through was because of this man. So I, I simply said to him, because he's probably up to my shoulders, <laughs> and I'm quite large. You are um, a man. I'm a large man. You're a large and, man, OGG. Um, large man. And I put my arm around him, and he'd just been skateboarding around. And I said, I would be utterly remiss to not tell you how much I love you and how much you have inspired me and how much you have meant to me. And to have that kind of experience, and also like with Matt from the National, that's had probably the equal amount of uh, impression upon me. The National has had a huge impact upon me because I'm a word man. I'm a wordsmith. I love words. <laughs> Anyone that reads my Instagram probably knows, like, what drugs is he on? I'm not on drugs. <laughs> I just love words. I love creating words. I love creating expressing my emotions and scenarios and how do I encapsulate this in a way that like Alice Monroe, and I'm not a short story lover, but how she can encapsulate in a sentence the power and emotion that Dostoevsky or David Foster Wallace takes a paragraph to express. Yeah. That's my interest with words and, and the national with what Matt does, which also his wife, I mean, his wife, especially the new album, she pretty much wrote it all as Dallas does with City and Color, God, ah, to meet these people. Yeah. It's Wait, just I, like... I, I, I'm going to bring up one more person that you had told me you were inspired by because it's a big story in my life. And I don't know if you know how much I, I credit you for this, but do you remember I met you one time at an audition and you asked me about Dennis Johnson's play. And you said... Oh, yeah. Remember this? You said, I think you've worked with Laura Rosenthal and she's casting and I love Dennis Johnson and I would just want to be in that play. And I don't know what it was because did I, you do the play? I did the play. But let I me tell fucking you, I can hate that. I, I didn't do the well, play. I recommended you. And then I called up my agent, which was yeah, shocking. Never got it. But listen to this. But congratulations I, to you. It, what I'm saying it, through all of that anger is congratulations. I'm so happy for you that you did that fucking play. Thank you so much. And what I want to say about that. <laughs> what I want to say about that is that's how I met my husband. That's when I met Scott. Well, you're welcome. So thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve OGG. You're welcome. Introducing me to my sweet husband. He came to see that play? He, uh, I, I, an actress in the play, fixed me up with him. We were fixed up by Gretchen Cleveley when we were doing Dennis Johnson's uh, shoppers being carried by escalators into the. I fucking love that because <laughs> goddamn is he is he is he a love of a man or what? Talk about like just an yeah. energy when you when you speak of people's energy, which I believe wholeheartedly in. That man, because I've met him a few times, we've hung out, yeah, uh, if you will. Uh, yeah. Talk about a palpable energy of someone. Like, be it a, a toxicity, and in Scott's case, just a fucking love of a human being. That's my, my the, the Rolling Stones, Salt of the Earth, not a big Rolling Stones song, but I've referenced it recently to my friend who was in this show that I, is everything I don't like about the business. But anyways, he did a great job. <laughs> but talk about Salt of the Earth. Just that fucking man. Your yeah. man. Your man. man, your man, baby, your man radiates yeah. salt of the earth. Yeah. Without knowing him yeah. really at all, aside <laughs> from interactions, because we all have our other sides. And I'm not talking about that because hopefully we're all a fucking beautiful rainbow because that's what makes life interesting. And you want the dark, you want the pink, you want the black, you want these colors. But I'm just saying this is this is a big shout out now to Scott, who's who's going to be the fucking listener number one on this. And he's and he, hopefully he'll get hopefully this will make the cut when you yeah. edit out, you know, 90 percent of the, the, the fucking shit I'm saying. And you just keep this that the love fest for Scott exists here now within this podcast. And that that's maybe that's what it's all about. You know what? I, I will tell you that, that uh, 
A, thank you. B, you're right. And C, I don't think that I would have the, um, I don't think that I would have the will to stay in this business and try my hand at everything and keep going without the love and support of that man. So I really, uh, I, I agree. And I thank you for asking me about that play. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It That's is what makes crazy. this fucking life so goddamn beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, it's the, 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 you know, it's the whole, you know, foul. I mean, this is something the the foul rag and bone shop of the heart, which I often believe is just life. It's just, it's, and which ties into the Smiths, right? And Keats and Yates are on your side, but you lose because wild is on mine. All right, Morrissey. You can have wild, but if I can have yeet and the foul rag and bone shop of the heart, that is life. That is the experience of life. That is living of life. And look, you know? at, we are still here. We are still here and we are still, uh, we are still doing what we love and we are still hungry for more of it. And, uh, I, I just feel like, um, having this conversation with you is, is, is really, um, I thank you. And I know the audience is going to love this whole thing, but for I, me, I just say good fucking luck editing this shit. It's like yeah, a two and a half hour podcast. Yeah, that's not my job. So I, I would just say this conversation is going to make me a better actor because you reminded me of some things that I forgot. Um, and I think Fuck better actor, just better Ideally, one could only ask that one becomes a better human or a better experience, right? I mean, because acting, talk about objectivity, is just that. I mean, what is a better actor? Yeah. The well, only I thing that makes a better be actor is a better human. And if you're more filled and you feel something, then fucking awesome. And if I had any contribution into it, good coolio and out of my control in a sense, but... <laughs> To, this is what's great about these podcasts is to chat yeah. about someone like especially someone you love and respect which i do for you on both counts um you know because even this morning i was thinking i can't talk today there's yeah. just no like i can't i don't feel good <laughs> uh you know what but then you bring your whole self to the conversation and i i for one I've gotten a lot out of this and I, uh, a lot to take to your therapist, your therapist with. Yes. Yeah. I tend to pour a lot on people. That is not everyone's cup of tea. And they'll be like, Holy fuck. I just felt like I just read a novel speaking to oh, you. For and those, then you got to go and, and detox. Yeah. Well, but tell me for those who want more, talk to me about your Instagram because there's blog og, right. And then tell, tell my people how to find you on the social. Well, on the so, I mean, the only social I'm on is Instagram. I don't do the face. I stopped the Facebook years ago, like six, seven years ago. The Twitter, I died. I stopped that years ago. I don't engage with any of that. And I don't engage with people on the Instagram. I my, my friends do and bless them. I, I just, for me, my Instagram is my, my gallery. It's my art gallery. It's my art installation. Pictures of me. The joke is, for those that still don't get it, it's the most self-indulgent fucking platform we've had. <laughs> <laughs> Where people show how fabulous their lives are. I'm taking pictures of my face and of me. <laughs> and the dichotomy is that I'm posting stuff that if you fucking read it, is actually nothing to do with how glamorous or great my life is. It's actually to do with how much I'm hurting. So that is what you are to take away from it, that all this goes back to Peter Spear. Here we go. Full circle, full circle. Okay, Peter full Spear circle. took me to the Rocky Horror Picture Show in Calgary. And it and I, I, uh, I think I knew of it before I saw the production in Calgary. But here is the gist of my entire life, my entire being, my entire possibly place upon this earth is based upon that Rocky Horror Picture Show of, well, and also Yago, I am not what I am, but I shan't place it on 
you know, a great evil character in literature, I shall equate it to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Don't get strung up by the way I look. Don't judge a book by its cover. And that's what my Instagram is. I go and I hang something on the wall. I need to express myself. Is it self-indulgent? Fuck yes. But you know what a, 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 a songwriter does? They write a song about that, the, the, an experience, an emotion, a relationship, a moment, a landscape, a painting, whatever it is. And, they, and you listen to it and you experience something. A painter throws something on the paint and paints it. A sculptor sculpts something and leaves it in the gallery. And you go and you look at it and you say, oh, that makes me feel great. That makes me feel that's stupid. It makes you fucking feel. But don't judge it for what it is. It's coming from another place. Just look at it and walk away from it knowing that it's something that someone expressed. And, 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 and that's all I do now. And that the blog og I created separately to just sort of not put my face in everything, being the joke of, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at my arms. Ooh, look at me, I'm jacked. I've been working out, look at me sweating. Look at my rippled abs. You are pretty jacked though, let's be honest. You're pretty jacked. I am pretty jacked for, for a guy who really doesn't work out. That's the irony. Well, that's some good genes, my friend. That's good genes and that's also being a bit of a fucking like, cause it's a cardio freak. I, I can no longer run. I've had surgeries this year. I'm, 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 but I will do whatever I need to to get my sweat out. Uh -huh. And it keeps me, uh, you know, it's simple, stupid. I, I eat what I want to eat, but it's in moderation. My granddad always said it. My mom has said it. I say it. Everything in moderation. If you in want to try it, try it. Everything in moderation, including moderation. Which, of course, I'm so not good at, but I do. I do. <laughs> you know, Mr. Balls deep. Mr. <laughs> but I am in that, you know, yeah. Uh, you, if you're going to eat something, eat it, but don't eat it every day. And I, I have this way because I, I go cycling and I also work for it. But I'm, it's not like I'm in the gym every day. I don't work out. Like, I don't like the gym. I don't like repetition. I'll, rip, I'll, I'll carry stones up and down a hill. But are you one of those people that if you, like Scott's like this, if he doesn't move, if he can't exercise, he really gets stuck in his head and it starts driving him crazy. I'm a, I'm, I don't know if you can tell, I have a lot going on in <laughs> my head. It's probably not obvious because I hide it really well through my silence. <laughs> yes. Um, like that stone. This year I've had, I had a meniscus surgery for the second time on my knee. I've had a toe surgery because I've got no more cartilage because I, I have a bit of a, you know, when I run, I would go for 16 miles. I don't know how I'm, I'm Forrest Gump. I just, my eyes roll back in my head and I just go. Those years are over for me. I've destroyed my body. So in this year, on top of everything fucking else I got going on emotionally that has affected me greatly. I mean, what saved me the past two years has been meditation. Mm -hmm. I could almost say, like, I, I'm not a drug person. So I, I mean, obviously, like, I guess you could consider alcohol a drug. And I do drink. I like beer. But as far as like heroin and people that I've known that have died from the drugs, man, if I was into drugs, I could almost say I'd probably be dead. Not because I want to die and I'm not suicidal by nature, but because of my need to escape. So I understand like if, if I, you know, heroin or something with these people that I have, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman, right? I mean, he didn't want to commit suicide. He wanted to escape the pain. Yeah, he wanted there's, a, there's a big fucking difference. Lane Staley, Alice in Chains, Chris Cornell. We could go down the list of amazing fucking, these people we've lost. They didn't commit suicide, as far as I'm concerned. They just wanted to escape, and they went overboard. And I can relate to that. Luckily, my only drug is beer. So if I go out at night and I drink, after six beers, I'm kind of like, okay. I've had enough and I stopped. 
But if I had drugs, my God, I'd be like, you know what? I'm still hurting. I still, the demons, I still feel depressed. I still feel anxious. Let me just a bit more. And this is what happens. And then you die. Not because you mean to, because you want to escape. And that's, I think, why I milk the teat out of life so much. Is because, honestly, my alternative is not good. Again, not a suicidal person, so I don't have to think about that. But the alternative to not milking the teat out of life is a really sad place. It's a very... It's the fetal position, which, as I've discovered, some people would love nothing more than to see me apparently in a fetal position, which makes no sense to me because that's not living. <laughs> well, I, I mean, first of all, I think that most people that are in your sphere want to see you thrive. And I know and remember that. The but, good, the good, the good people. Yeah, people are. People root for you and people, I think, I, I don't know if you know how many people you inspire. There are guys that I worked with in Red Dead that, you know, they, they look at you and they think, you know, that, that is a guy that I would model a career after. I mean, I think that you're. And that's crazy. Cause that makes me want to yeah. fucking ball my eyes up because I do not feel like that. I understand that. And I hear that, but as far as living that truth, as far as understanding that, I, I don't, Kylie, I just don't. I, I, and I recognize it. And again, I'm no longer because I've worked meditation and therapy and I work on myself. I don't do the same shitting upon my own head that I used to do, that I'm useless, that I'm a shithead, that I fucking suck. I'm not good enough. Fuck all that. I can stand here today after all this work and say, no, I'm, it's the whole Stuart Small, smiley, smiley, whatever, smally thing. I'm good enough. I did it in God, whatever that thing was. Right. I, and God darn it. Go darn it. People like me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's me now. Yeah. It's, I, I know I'm good. I know I, I offer something good. To me, that's the same thing as I'm grateful for that. I'm blessed for the, it, it's on the same. I'm equating sort of the, the, the work in the business with this idea that you just said of, I'm grateful. I'm fucking thankful. If I can inspire someone, oh my God, how beautiful, how lucky, yeah. how beautiful and lucky to, to have worked on these shows, to be a working actor right now. Am I doing a lot on Snowpiercer? Well, you'll see. The point being is that very grateful, very thankful. Just like to hear what you said, that people you work with are inspired. Yeah. It, but well, I, it, it doesn't mean I, my hand is still out here in everything, I, in love, in work, in everything. I want to be better. There are things that I don't have right now in my life that fuck me. That's all I want. We all have that. But, but I hope that you will take in how much you've inspired me and how much these fans I've spoken to are inspired by you and how much my, my, my cast members have been inspired by you. I hope you can take that in because let me tell you something. It's not nothing. It's not. And I do. And I say thank you. All right, you. Well, I think on that beautiful and inspiring note, I am going to uh, to thank you so much for doing this with me because I really, uh, I'm I'm leaving this. Um, in, I've said inspired. Is there another word for inspired? Is there a synonym word, guy? For inspired. Yeah. What can I say? Um, I would say. I mean, oh. honestly, it's not a synonym. But it's something I was reading about this morning. Because I'm reading this beautiful book. I think something similar to inspired is hopeful. Okay. It's not a synonym of. But I think hope and inspiration are the same thing. Because both lead you to a place where you're wanting more. And it has nothing to do with where you're at. And how much you appreciate or gratefulness or any of that. Inspiration and hope are both something that lead you forward. Make you want to be better. Like. Yes. Get you excited. Like, yeah. fuck. Yes. I want to fucking do something better. <laughs> yes. Well, that's how I feel after this conversation. And oh, I think a lot of people you. that hear it are going to feel that same way. And I, uh, and I really, I look forward to seeing you walk the boards. I'm going to do it with you. We're going to make that happen. Um, 
and I can't wait to see Snowpiercer. So um, I'm going to have some, sh after after we finish here, I'm going to, there'll be show notes when this thing is posted and um, I'll put the links to the blog. Og. Is there anything else you want to ask people to uh, come find you doing besides Instagram and Snowpiercer? <laughs> <laughs> Besides, come find me curled up in a fetal find position, hoping for better tomorrow. Okay. I will put instructions on the show notes for where people can find you curled up in a fetal position. I literally only have, like, Instagram is my only thing. And as people know, it's not everyone's cup of tea. And I don't care. It's, it's what I do. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Well, thank you so much. And I hope that uh, I will get to see you next time you're in New York. I hope that you will call me and we'll get to do this in person yeah i wish i was in new york more i wish i was over there more um and we will see but as 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 for now i'm on the other coast and i'm in vancouver you know working and uh yeah we'll definitely we'll definitely connect and i i thank you for the the opportunity to blab away and even without blabbing away it was just lovely to reconnect and chat yeah, with you. It really, really was. All right, go enjoy your farm eggs. Yeah, I guess I should make a fucking omelet or something. Go make an omelet. <laughs> All, right, All right, darling. Thank you so much. All right, lots of love to you. Love right back. Bye. Bye bye. Well, that was quite a ride. I just love that man. Be sure to check out Stephen in Snowpiercer, which premiered Sunday, May 17th, and airs weekly on TNT, and his new film, The Short History of the Long Road, coming out June 12th. Stephen can also be found on Instagram at og underscore Stephen. And since this is our very last episode of the season, I just want to take a moment to thank all of my incredible guests for taking time to sit down and talk to me. I have loved every second of it. And to all the incredible fans out there listening, thank you for joining us and for all the support. And if you have a moment to rate and review our show, it would mean so much. I read every single comment, and I truly look forward to hearing from all of you. Thanks, everybody. Until next time. Thank you for listening. Let's Play was brought to you by The Gamers, a community that connects all gamers who identify as women and welcomes people of all genders who support this. Let's Play was co-produced by Kylie Vernoff, Jenny Grossa, and The Gamers team, Laura Deutsch, Rebecca Dixon, Heather Awida, and me, Verna Maloney. Please visit thegamers.com for show notes, to access exclusive bonus material, and to learn more about The Gamers community. And if you liked what you heard, we'd so appreciate it if you subscribed and gave us a five-star review. Thanks again for listening.